I may just have a bad memory, but when you do four perfect consults in a day, sometimes you even get to the end of the day and you're like, what did that second call even go like? I, I totally forget their objection, yeah. you know? Um, and so, yeah, no, hundred percent. The other piece about scaling and why this is so important to build data collection into the system, into the process is when you have a team. Hey guys, you might recognize these voices or faces by now, but I'm Hannah and I am our lead success coach and accelerator. So I have the delight and joy to be working with our mastermind clients, uh, taking their coaching businesses to multiple six figures, half a million and beyond. And today I have one of those clients, Zach White, joining us. Zach is a coach that helps engineers design the career and lifestyle that they desire of their dreams, you might even say. And Absolutely. Zach has been in the HIC family for almost exactly one year. We just celebrated that. So amazing. I can't believe so it's good. been a year already. I know. It's so good that we um, have gotten to evolve so much in the last 12 months. And highlighting you as an expert now, right? Because you've um, brought a lot to our community and your business um, and specifically um, helping us and clients and your own team think about data in new ways. Sometimes it's that dirty word that us- Oh, so dirty. You know, we just want to change the world and you know see people blossom into unicorns. Um, but then we realize when we get into the business side of coaching, that there's like tracking and marketing and analyzing. Um, and I think your engineer background has something to do with your, um, your ability to, to make data your friend. Totally. And you know, this is something Xander and I have in common with being engineers by training and background. And I also left a very successful corporate career that started in engineering uh, to do this and to change the world through coaching. And, you know, he, he makes a great point that to run a coaching business, you have to have great coaching, but have a great business as mm -hmm. well. And data is a part of that. And so I, you know, I, I wanted to share a couple of my thoughts and mindsets, some tips, if you will, on how to make data your friend, how to fall in love with that, because it's so valuable in scaling your business and the systems and the tools and everything Xander shows us in this program work, but only when you commit and you got to measure. Yeah. And so that, that's what I would love to share with folks. What's been working for me in the last year, going from zero, literally no idea what I was doing when I joined HIC a year ago to, you know, that multiple six figure mark right yep. now, which has been a fantastic run. Yeah. And this is the thing that I think is, I want to underscore before we get into your points, it's that you can go and haphazardly get clients and work the system and, you know, even hit 10 K like that, that is possible here with what we teach you, but to scale and to have consistency. I think that's really what coaches are looking for is the consistent income and enrollments and business. And that's where data is really the, the key to making this repeatable, replicatable. Um, and as Zach always talks about, you know, finding the gaps, because if you just do it haphazardly, then cool, it works when it works when the law of attraction is on, you feel good when it's off, you don't know what you're doing with your life anymore. Um, but when you have data, you, you can really zero in on where you need to manifest or where you need to focus, right? So true. So All right. True. So yeah, talk to us. What are some of these shifts or tips you have around data for us? Yeah. First thing, you know, it's the core mindset of data. And a lot of people have heard the phrase, what gets measured gets managed. That's not actually true. But what is true is that if you can't measure it or you don't, then you can't manage it. I know Xander doesn't like the word can't. So if you don't measure it, then you don't have the opportunity to manage it if you don't make that choice. And this is such an important thing to realize. When we say manage it, what does that really mean? You know, management is just the set of decisions that you need to make as the business owner in how you're going to use the resources that are available to you. And the two most critical when you're at those early stages of starting your coaching business is your time and your energy. What should you focus on? Where does your time go? What are the things you need to work on? And if you don't measure, then you don't have the data you need 
to make great decisions about how mm-hmm. to manage those resources, that time and energy that you have available to grow the business. So the first thing you've got to do with data is just change your mindset to it being a hassle. It's a drag. It's another to do. It's an annoying thing that Hannah said, I have to get done if I want to, you know, have no drama in my life. Well, it's not just a to do item. It's an enabler for you to make great decisions about how to grow your business. And when you can get into that mindset that if you measure it, it gives you the opportunity to make a great decision and to manage your time and energy, then you can start to get more excited about taking that extra step and getting the data in your hands. Yeah. And something I've noticed about you, Zach, having kind of been part of this year is that I've seen your mindset shift with data from, you know, maybe bringing problems to asking just better questions. Data allows you to ask better questions. So I remember we used to, you know, like, oh, here's kind of what I'm thinking. I don't know, these are my problems, Hannah. That's how you would come to coaching calls. And now you come to coaching calls with like, all right, so obviously I know my focus is on sales calls. These are the numbers, this is the convert. And it's just like, you can just get to solutions so much more quickly when it's data, not drama. Totally. Man, Hannah, it's like you read my notes before because my second point around data is that data doesn't make you smart. Mm. Collecting data doesn't make you smart, but it does allow you to ask great questions and use the data to get great answers. Mm -hmm. You know, if you ask a question with no data, then it's to the whim of your opinion and emotion and the drama of your life to just take a shot in the dark and pick an answer. When you ask a great question and you have the data to support you or you collect the right data to answer that question, then you, you can really get smart in your business. So, you know, I don't want people to take away from point one. Hey, Zach said, if you measure it, your business grows. Well, that's not true at all. Data by itself doesn't make you smart. It's the questions that you ask and then using data to answer them that makes you smart. Yes. Beautifully put. I love that. So third tip, the one thing that I get asked more often than anything else from the data haters out there, and you know who you are, data haters. Okay. You could just raise your hand right now where you're at. Data haters, they're out there. Okay. So there's, this is a thing. I get it. You know, it's like, how do you make it less painful to go do this? It's such a drag. It's such a big chore, you know, because what a lot of people do is they'll put some to-do list on their weekly task or maybe even block some time on their calendar. And once a week or once a month, they try to wrangle this big beast called data collection. And they're out there trying to get all the numbers at once and update all these spreadsheets. And that sounds horrible to me too. Mm -hmm. If that's what Mm -hmm. I had to do every Mm -hmm. week or every month, I would hate data as well. So my third tip for you is make data collection part of the process part of the system. Collect the data at the moment that that thing happens. So I'll give you a couple examples of that. When you make a call and you hang up the phone, the very next thing to do is open up your call tracker and just put in the result. What happened? I had a call. They said yes, they said no, or, you know, whatever it is that you need to keep track of to help you with your call data. Do it right away. You know, don't wait until the end of the week and then go back and look at all the calls that you made and, and try to remember what happened. Mm-hmm. I don't, oh, I, okay, this person said yes. I actually don't even remember what that person said. Okay, yep. make data part of the process. Or if you're out in the DM land on Instagram, let's say you block two hours in your afternoon to work Instagram. As soon as the timer goes off and you're done, immediately write down that number of DMs that you open, right? Even better, As soon as you open one, have a little note card, just put a little tally mark right there, you know, as you're doing it. So you don't have to guess how many DMs did I open? It's, It's already there for you. So pulling that data collection into the flow of your work so that you get to the end of the week and the data is already done. There's no extra work to it. And, and this is critical for scaling. So a lot of folks listening might be thinking like, how does Zach forget what sales calls he had? Like, I only have two sales calls a week and I remember it so emotionally, exactly what happened. Or, you know, I'm just starting to do some warm outreach. Like, I don't know how to track my, um, my DMs or how many asks I'm making or how many outreaches I'm doing. 
But again, if you want to scale, if you want to be at the level of a six figure, multiple six figure, multi-million dollar coach and beyond, like you can't get by very long without um, tracking because you are going to get to a point when you have like, I don't know, Zach, you do something like 12 sales calls a week or something right now. Um, this yeah. guy could easily forget what happens. Um, so if you're looking at this, like, oh, I don't need that yet. Start way before you think you need to. Would you agree with that, Zach? 100%. And I may just have a bad memory, but when you do four perfect consults in a day, sometimes you even get to the end of the day and you're like, what did that second call even go like? I, I totally forget their objection, yeah. you know? Um, and so, yeah, no, hundred percent. The other piece about scaling and why this is so important to build data collection into the system, into the process is when you have a team and you're going to start handing off these responsibilities to other people, then you need them to step up and collect the data as they work so that it doesn't fall back on you to measure on their behalf. So yep. when you build it into the process, that really helps in delegation and getting your team to uh, operate smoothly and efficiently as well. Yeah. And you guys, as coaches, you tell your people to do this all the time, right? Like if you're a health coach, you want your people to just get their steps in, like in their natural routine, right? Like make adding greens just part of what you do with every meal. Like think about this as just, you know, holding yourself accountable too for like actually doing the work. Like if you want to have a scalable business, like you got to make data part of the coaching um, and, you know, other strategies that you're doing. I love that. So tip number four, if you're going to go to all the trouble to collect data, then you need to look at it. Yeah. You need to look at your data. You need to use it. Okay. And, and so tip four, look at the data, but there's a couple of things specifically I want to highlight here. One is remember to look at all the data. Mm -hmm. And one thing that happens a lot is we start to narrow in at just, you know, maybe you'd use the fancy all data, no drama sheet, and there's a summary percentage somewhere. And you'd look at just that summary number and you're like, oh no, I have this huge problem. And one of the things that you have to be aware of and be careful about is data is only as good as the input. And sometimes we make mistakes. Like you can finger fudge a number and put mm -hmm, something in mm -hmm. wrong, or you, know, you, you put in a zero and it should have been a 10, or you know, fill in the blank, right? And so it's important as you use data to solve problems that you're just intentional on occasion to like look at all of it because there's normal problems and then there's oopses and special problems in the business. And so mm -hmm. data entry is one type of special problem, but also maybe last week, I'll actually use an example from my business. Last week I had a really low volume of calls. If I looked at last week and said, oh shit, my business is falling apart. You know, like mm -hmm, this is not good. Mm -hmm. I have a huge problem right now. Well, if I look at the last two months of data, that was an unusually low week. Mm -hmm. So do I need to freak out about what's going on in the business? Probably not yet. You know, it's something I can be aware of, but at this point it looks, it looks different. It looks special. So I'm aware, but I don't need to react yet enough. Two weeks, three weeks in a row, I start to see a trend in the wrong direction and things are not coming back. Now I can start to ask better questions of the data and really understand what's going on. So yeah, look at your data, look at all of it, right? What's going on, making sure there's not mistakes, mm -hmm. but also what's the trends? What are yes. the directions of what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard Kahal talk about this. Um, you know, sometimes he'll, he, he gets in his own head. I know you guys don't think that, but um, our, our head sales guy, Kahal, um, he's been with us for a while and he's really great at what he does, but he'll go a day or two without a sale, which again, I know sounds crazy, but he's doing like five sales calls a day. So, you know, he'll go a day or two without sales and, you know, like get wondering, wanting to like find the solution, ask a good question, yeah. like Zach is saying, but then you look at this, you know, in a couple of weeks, and again, it's about the trends and Kahal always ends up at like a 39% conversion rate, no matter when these fluctuations happen or where they happen. And keep in mind, especially when it comes to marketing and sales, there's a lot that you can't control. There is, uh, you know, California wildfires. People aren't going to be jumping on a call for there's, um, you know, going back to school time. Like there's all these things that are out of your control. So I love how Zach's saying, like, come back to the bigger story and the bigger picture and mm -hmm. be looking for the trends and the, the data points that you have control over. Totally. And 
again, for the data haters out there, I hate to tell you this, but it is a long game. You can't mm -hmm. collect data for a week or even a month and then say, I've got enough to make these great decisions and scale my business. You know, it's an ongoing thing you need to always do. And honestly, and you know, Xander's been really helpful in reminding me of this constantly. Until you have a full year of data in your business, you really still don't even have enough data to say that you've seen a full cycle of what may sure. happen. And when your business is, is growing, you know, even then one year might not be enough because the last three months may not really look the same at all as the original three months when you were just at the very beginning stages. So you know, not to discourage people like, oh, no, it's going to take 18 months before I can get any value from this. Not at all. The value starts immediately by seeing gaps, even in the right. data that you're collecting. But also, you know, remember, this is a long game that we're playing. We're not going to stop collecting data because it just gets more and more valuable over time. Yeah. So what are some of the most helpful data points that you track? You know, when you talk about you want lots of it and it's all helpful, where are the places that you found is most helpful to focus in on? You know, the having a robust understanding of the sales funnel, the seed model that Xander teaches, making sure you understand the inputs and outputs at each step. So how many people are you connecting with? How many become DMs, how many convert to clarity calls, how many become consultations, how many say yes, how many say no. That, that is table stakes because if you don't understand the mm -hmm. flow of the sales funnel, then you don't know what's working and what's broken in your ability to enroll. And if you don't enroll, we don't have a scalable business. So that'd be number one. And, you know, HIC provides incredible tools. Xander's, you know, work around this is, is awesome. Just do what they say. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other piece then is in delivery. You know, what are the one or two things that you need to pay attention to, to really understand client success? And that may look different in your business than mine, but having something there that is a leading indicator for you of, are your clients getting the results and the benefits that you committed to them? Because again, in the long run, if you don't deliver, then there's also not a business there to scale. Yeah. Yeah. I think those are really important. Um, and are you going to talk a little bit about how often to review What's kind of the cadence there? Track it daily, but is this number five? Am I on your same yeah, Hannah, link again? You're really, yeah, but let me, I'll just say it. So my, my fifth tip is around yeah. this, this idea of, okay, what do I do with it? What, what's it really for in the end? And my fifth tip is if you want to know if data is working for you, then start making predictions. Hmm. Start making predictions. Remember that a business is a system. It's a system that delivers a predictable output. Right. And, and we want that to be enrollments and client results. You know, we want to be able to predictably enroll clients, connect, engage and enroll them and then deliver great results. So if you want to know how is my business, then look at your data for the last month and make a prediction like, hey, this month I should be able to connect with this many people and enroll this many people. And as you get better at making those predictions, you're going to start having more and more confidence that your business is working, the system yeah. of your business is working. So you asked like, how often do I do that? For me, it's weekly. You know, mm -hmm. I, I really believe that if you pulse faster, you grow faster. And this idea of, if I wait to look at the data for three months, then all the opportunities to learn from what it's telling me in that period of time, I miss those chances to, you know, tweak and pivot and iterate my focus into the right space. For me, da daily is, too fast. I don't have the ability to respond or I choose not to take that time because that's almost a bit too scattered. Mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. you know, monthly when you're scaling at the very beginning, I found to be too slow because our business has changed very quickly yeah. and the market is changing really quickly right now. So weekly has yeah, been the yeah. answer for me to mm -hmm. look at the data and make predictions. You know, this week, here's what I believe I can do. And then at the end of the week, reflect on it. What did I do what I thought I could do this week? And if I didn't, you know, part of it is variation and you're going to learn like, okay, my, my business is capable within some range of performance, but if you're never even close, then you have to ask the question, is the system of my business really maturing or am I still pretty scattered in, in what yeah, I'm doing? Absolutely. I love that. The, the one week, you know, kind of gut check because 
this even just starting in reverse order perhaps of how to Zach laid this out like maybe the first step for you guys listening is to schedule a time in the week to look at your numbers and that's a really great gut check because if you don't have numbers <laughs> then what are you going to do with that time um and then moving forward you know you 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 start to track let's say next week so then a week from now you look back and you realize i didn't offer any calls I didn't take any action on the connecting side of things. So why would you expect your business to be growing? Right? So I think that this like weekly gut check or meeting with yourself is so critical to just hold you accountable for not just tracking, but taking the actions that you need to take to have a business and grow a business. Yeah. I love that. If somebody's asking their question right now, how do I start? If you yes. do exactly what Hannah just said, you know, put 15 minutes or 30 minutes on your calendar for a data review. And if you get there and there's no data to look at, you know your first step. It's time to start collecting some data, okay? If you do have data, look at it and see what story it tells you and then ask some questions, right? Start asking questions. If you don't know what questions to ask, you know, talk to the HIC team. They can help you with that. But what is, what is the question you need to know? Is my Instagram shuffle working? You know, how am I doing on enrolling? What, like, what do you feel like you want to know to understand your business better? And then do you have the kind of data that's going to tell you those answers? And then every week, just continue that, that simple rhythm. Look at the data you have, see what story it tells you, and then ask some new questions, make new predictions, and just keep maturing that process. Yeah. Absolutely. So we have your, your first action point is to just schedule the time, but then Zach, run us through those, those five pieces one more time, just to give us a good recap here. Absolutely. So first thing, our mindset around data, you have to remember that if you don't measure it, you don't have the opportunity to manage it and make great decisions. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you're a data hater, if you want to scale a great business to multiple six figures and beyond, then shift your mindset and recognize data enables great decision making. The second piece, make data collection part of the process. Collect that data and enter that data into your spreadsheets at the moment it happens. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to wait until the end of the month or the end of the week to batch all of this thinking that's efficient, make it part of the process. The third thing, data doesn't make you smart. Asking great questions about your data is what makes you smart. The fourth one, you got to look at the data if you want to actually get value from it. So having this time, setting aside intention to look at all your data and ask about trends and just make sure you discern, is this normal or is there something unique and special happening here and, and reacting accordingly. And then that final piece is, you know, data is a great way to know if your business system is maturing and scaling the way you think it is. So make predictions. Mm. And the better you get at your prediction, predictions matching reality, the more confident you can feel that that business system, that machine that you're building is really working smoothly. Yes, absolutely. You can see yourself kind of ticking the, the you know, marks that you need to, to hit those big goals that you have, right? We encourage you guys to set big goals. Why do we set goals? So we can figure out how to achieve them, right? It really is about those, those ticks on the, the timeline to growth. So if you have this big goal of, you know, having a million dollar coaching business, well, you got to start by like booking 10 calls a week. <laughs> um, and so I think it's a, a really important breakdown for wherever you're at. If you are just getting started and feel like this is all big and you're not sure how you're going to get there, or if you're starting to set goals, you know, stretch goals um, to push yourself forward. So speaking of stretch goals, Zach, I would love to rewind the tape a little bit to when you jumped into HIC, yeah. um, you had big goals coming into this program and thinking back to, you know, 2019, Zach, now that we're in 2020, what do you wish you had known starting this process or what would you tell him now looking back? Ooh, a lot. But I think you have three minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. So, so probably the, the one thing that I would hammer home to 2019, Zach, is to, to trust the process over the long term, the, the law of averages. Mm. You know, it's not going to be immediate and it's not going to be every time. But 
the growth is will happen if you follow this the, the system and the tools and the process that hic delivers it works it does and there were just so much there was so much desire to see a result immediately that i created my own drama around that and had some really tough tough nights right it's like man is is this working am i gonna make it mm -hmm. so i think you know having a, a recognition that my faith in the long-term game is what I needed. I was so focused on the short-term game. Mm -hmm. And you know, data is a great way to knock the drama out of that because eventually you start to see, okay, if I just keep consistently doing these things, I will enroll. Yeah. And maybe I didn't this week, but that just means that yes is even closer because yeah. again, it, it's going to come. So that's probably the biggest thing is for me just to have the faith in that long game and keep doing the simple tasks to, to build that system and get it working because it does work. Yeah. Consistency breeds consistency. So I, I think that's going to land. I would love to hear from you guys watching live on Facebook. If that resonated with you as you're, you know, starting or up leveling your coaching business journey, Zach, thank you so much. This is a 10 out of 10 on my uh, rating tracking sheet for interviews. I'm going to review this later in that the week. So good and look to duplicate these results. <laughs> um, always appreciate your uh, generosity oh, and expertise. Well, a 10 out of 10 of anything Hannah is doing makes my month. So I've, <laughs> I, I can stop. October's in the books for yeah. me. I've got my 10 out of 10. So <laughs> Amazing work. Thank you so much, Zach. And uh, we'll see you all very soon to uh, continue building your high impact coaching business.